Hey everyone, uh, welcome back in the second video. Uh, in the last video, we completed the syllabus for week one. Now let's get into the syllabus for week two. Now in the last week, you had focused majorly on understanding uh, the statistical aspects, very less of uh, what machine learning is. And you had to brush up, and I hope that you have brushed up. Uh, uh, all the concepts of basic statistics, matrices, vector algebra, and calculus. Now, the first point of week two is linear regression. Now, some people might point out that why something that is easier, linear regression, is coming in week two and logistic regression came in week one. Uh, again, as I said, that I tried to balance it up. Uh, I mean, it would have been easier for you for reading about linear regression right after understanding what is a cost function and all that stuff, but that would have made week one uh, less dense in terms of the content that you uh, would have got to cover. So starting with linear regression, uh, just uh, the basic definition, uh, what it is, what it is all about, and assumptions of linear regression. Now, before getting into the individual algorithms that we are going to discuss in week two, I want to make an approach very clear. Whenever you read any algorithm, uh, it's easier for me to just read them out, DB scan and all that stuff, PCA. But what's important is that there is a certain flow when you are learning about an algorithm. So let's say we take up any algorithm X, Y, Z. Okay. So the first thing that you should learn thoroughly is the mechanism, the mathematics that is involved. And again, depending on what source you're using, uh, and what level of preparation you're doing, this thing might vary. And one of the perfect example of that, uh, this word is PCA, right? So what is the objective function of PCA? And what is the time complexity of PCA and all that stuff? Generally, people avoid reading all about that, all about that. So I would like to make an analogy with your uh, plus two level chemistry that in your NCRTs, you had reactions and in your coaching classes, you had reactions uh, with like balancing them and all that stuff. And once you got to uh, your J advanced level preparation, you had to understand what the mechanism of the reaction was. So similarly, if you're looking for interviews uh, with uh, uh, good companies, I think you would be expected to know at least a certain depth, level of depth of any algorithm. And uh, once you're done with the depth of algorithm and the mechanism of that, then again, there are two things that you need to understand. The interview questions focus majorly on challenging you that why do you think that this algorithm is useful, right? So let's say you learned about uh, K-means algorithm. You made a capstone project on that. So the interviewer would ask you that, that where are the cases that this algorithm would fail miserably what are the cases where this algorithm will perform exceptionally good? So apart from understanding the mechanism, it's very important that you know that why, when, and in what, what, what kind of scenario you have decided to use this algorithm for your capstone project, whatever the problem statement was, uh, whatever business statement you uh, took for making and taking up this algorithm as a solution. So with this, uh, I'll be talking, starting, let's start with uh, KNN. Uh, we are talking about distance matrices. So I think we discussed in the last video about uh, generalization to n dimensions. So let's say you, you want to calculate distances. You can have different ways in which you can do that. You have the classical Euclidean distance. You have the Manhattan distance. You have uh, different sort of uh, distance, distance matrices matrix when uh, whatever uh, situation you are in uh, you can choose that you know, Manhattan distance and all that stuff now as I said that once you're done with Canon you need to understand what are the problems with Canon what are the solutions sometimes you will be provided with solutions KD trees locality sensitive uh, hashing as such clustering algorithms performance based metrics for unlabeled data so now we are getting into some unsupervised section. Uh, K-means, another way to uh, make things better using K-means++. DBSCAN algorithms, again, the advantages of DBSCAN, disadvantages of DBSCAN. Few concepts like reachability distance, uh, locality outlier factor. Now, see, this because this is a syllabus 
oriented video i cannot focus on each and every concept in a lot of details but in future i'll definitely uh, uh, try to take up these single sub topics and make videos on them but uh, right now it's about the syllabus so uh, please pardon if i cannot get into the details of each and every sub topic that i have written or mentioned over here so once you're done with that let's get to a ninth sub to a sub sub point that is revisiting conditional probability uh, you're already aware of that but since we are getting into the naive base and Bayes theorem is very essential for understanding of that. You should revisit and just uh, look, uh, brush it up a little bit. Now we get into the basics of NLP. Uh, basic concepts like stemming, stop words, bag of words, TF, IDF. These are very fundamental. Nothing rocket science in this, uh, in these, any of these. Very simple concepts. Then you have naive base algorithm. The assumptions, as I said, that the utopia for these algorithms, the best scenarios for them, log probabilities, Laplace smoothing, again, the bad scenarios for an algorithm for a naive base, what what to do when you have outliers, naive base for continuous variables. If you remember discussing different types of data types, we talked about categorical and continuous values. So here we are talking about uh, how to deal with continuous variables. Next, we come to course of dimensionality, principal component analysis, the mathematical aspects of uh, principal component analysis, eigenvectors, eigenvalues, and linear transformations, Lagrange multipliers. Again, this is a part of PCA and its mathematics, solving PCA objective function. Then we come to um, SNE, TSNE, k divergence. Again, um, k divergence is a, a metric. Again, limitations of TSNE, obviously. Uh, now we have done logistic regression, linear regression. We are done with few unsupervised learning algorithms. We have we have learned about clustering and all that stuff. We learned about naive Bayes algorithms. We learned that every algorithm has certain pros, certain cons. You should be aware of that. Now we are coming to introduction to decision trees. Now, again, we talked about the need of cost functions before in the last week. So after getting uh, after getting to the introduction part, we will talk about entropy, Gini impurity, uh, pruning of trees, and splitting of nodes for continuous variables. So you see that even though week two might seem uh, less in terms of the uh, breadth of the syllabus, uh, you should understand that each and every algorithm has its own certain depth. So unlike simpler topics that were there in week one, each and every topic has a certain depth associated with it. So that's why I have kept it smaller because eventually it will take week two. And again, as I said, that it all depends. When I say the syllabus for one week, it all depends on uh, how much depth that you go. Uh, PCA can be, uh, a project on PCA can be your master's thesis your UG project, anything. So uh, it's it's on you that what level of depth you want to go. And eventually I'll make videos on these subparts also. So see you in the third video on deep learning and we will get to the world of neural networks. So see you soon. Bye-bye.